first? Do you get up and wash your face, brush your teeth? What do you do? What's your routine? Go downstairs, have your coffee. You have a routine, whether you notice it or not. Yeah. Now to spice up that sex life, you might need to break that routine a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's like wake up 10 minutes yeah. earlier. Mm-hmm. Surprise BJs, you know, or surprise. What do you call it when you do it to a woman? Because I know it's a blow job for a guy, but eating out a surprise. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I'm, I, I'm surprise I'm, dinner out. <laughs> A surprise vaginal play. I don't know. Whatever it is, surprise your lover. Whether it's, I mean, dressing sexy or just a surprise sex act that they don't expect. It could be anything. It could Mm -hmm. be a surprise reach around in Mm -hmm. the morning when you're cuddling. It could be some surprise kisses. Maybe you Mm -hmm. don't even kiss your partner in the morning. Mm -hmm. Surprise them with some kisses or some cuddles. It's not, I guess you would say it's a routine, but I think it helps. I kiss my husband as soon as I wake up every day. Before I get out of bed, I look at him. And usually he, he when I'm coming near, for some, for some weird reason, he always wakes up. Um, we kiss oh. each other. And then I go on with my morning. That's when I go on to like do my little morning routines that I have to do. But yeah, the kissing, I feel like the affection part is important mm-hmm. because when it happens... And when it's unexpected, at least for me, as not a certified uh, dating expert, but just as a person, it constantly keeps my husband in my mind sexually in a way like, oh, I remember that time he squeezed my chest and called me a little term of endearment and kept it moving. It didn't turn into full on sex, but those little things. It doesn't need to. And as the dating expert, I'll tell you why (laughs) that's so important. That keeps connection. Yeah. Yeah. You can't have a real bond with someone without connecting. You need to be connecting regularly with your partner. Mm-hmm. You can't just coexist. Mm-hmm. So having that kind of routine where you say good morning, give a kiss, that's allowing you to connect first thing in, mm-hmm. of the day. That's the first mm-hmm. thing that you do. Mm-hmm. That is that connection. It maintains that bond, mm-hmm. even if it's part of your team. doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, it's... I like it. And I feel like because we do stuff like that, it keeps things a little fresh. Now, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes we do get in our ruts where, you know, either he's stressed out at work or I'm preoccupied with something. You're just not in a sexy mood. And sometimes that can last a while. What are like, that's, I feel like that's inevitable, especially the longer you're in a relationship. I think so naturally as humans, we start to take things for granted, you know? Oh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're naked next to me, but I can, I can see them naked for the next five, 10 years. So I don't need to rush it. So how do we combat those feelings to be able to keep things spicy in our relationship? Right. I see where you're going with that. Mm-hmm. To be able to see your partner differently rather than constantly looking over in the same body I've seen for the past 12 months, the past mm-hmm. 12 years, mm-hmm. but it's just the same, same person, same thing. Mm-hmm. So it's got to happen outside the bedroom. It has to be done on a regular basis. So for example, finding a new hobby together, finding mm-hmm. something new to do, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the weekend comes along and you look to see what's going on in your community. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, honey, there's this new exhibit. Let's go Mm -hmm. check it out. It's not something that we would normally do, Mm -hmm. but let's just try something new together. When you're trying something that's new for both of you, it allows you to bond because it's a new experience. Mm -hmm. You're both a little bit nervous. You're not really sure what to expect. You're the two newbies coming into the situation together. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're experienced and your partner isn't, you're not at the same level. You want to do things that allow you to be on the same playing level, trying new experiences that are new for both of you together allows you to connect on a different level. Then what you'll see is that kind of spills into your intimacy, which spills back into the bedroom. Hmm. And that will actually keep you a little bit spicier because Hmm. you have these new experiences together. Otherwise you roll over and you're like, eh, it's the same person, same thing, same day, whatever. Who gives a shit? Exactly. You know, funny you mention that because I noticed that 
when I'm, when we're choosing things to do together, unless it's something we love and we have a membership to it, I tend to shy away from things that we're not doing together for the first time, even something as simple as a movie. Like if we want to both see a movie, let's say I have a friend that wants to see it because he's a huge fan and I go with him, but my husband also wants to see it. It feels weird doing something that I've already done with my husband. It's always like, I feel like the best situation is where we're both walking into a completely brand new, whether it's a restaurant, a movie, a, 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 a new theme park adventure, yes. a road trip. Cause there've been places I visit on my own. And when it comes to us planning things, those places are usually off the list because it's like, yes. it's not something we can both do together for the first time. Huh? Right. Like the movie example, if your friend really wants to see this movie and your husband really wants to see this movie, go for the first time with your husband, mm. see it a second time with the friend who yeah. cares if you're experiencing it for first with a friend. Yeah, I, I kind of wish I did it the other way. Because when I, one night he was sitting and watching the movie that I'm thinking of. Aww. I mean, he didn't get through it because I, I, I gave my review of it too soon. And I was Aww. like, oh, it's, it's boring. It's long. And then when he was watching, I think he fell asleep like in the beginning of the film. I mean, it would have been different if we would have went through this, to the theater together. Yeah. But at home, it's a totally different experience. So yeah, I, I kind of, I don't regret anything I do with my friends. But I do wish like things that my husband is interested in, I want to do them with him first because it, it just, it adds something like all those little things. I feel like constantly keep my husband at the forefront of my mind. It's like, oh, we can do this together. And those feelings, like you said, it does flood over into other areas where when I do see him, I do get excited because mm -hmm. of all the many, many things that we've done together. We forget that. When you have a first, it can only happen once. You can yeah. only have a first reaction to any situation one time. Yeah, It's a first for a reason. It is mm -hmm. the first. Mm -hmm. So if you are experiencing anything for the first time, even like you said, a new restaurant, maybe mm -hmm. there's this cool new fusion restaurant that opened up. You go with your friend and you experience it there with them first and you have this crazy experience you're like oh my goodness this is amazing honey mm -hmm. let's go to this restaurant together it's so crazy and you go together and then you're watching him have his first mm -hmm. and you are experiencing your second which mm -hmm. means your excitement's going to be like oh yeah killed a little bit and then you'll even start to try to wish they recognize certain things that you saw the first time so instead yes. of you like being fully engaged in the experience you're like oh wait wait they're about to do this thing you need to pay attention then it kind of like uh versus you experiencing it for the first time together and having that mm -hmm. shared excitement of oh my god that was crazy can you mm -hmm. did you see that i know mm -hmm. did you taste this like mm -hmm. that excitement of mm -hmm this was the coolest experience. I am on cloud nine. I am on yeah. a natural high because we're sharing this experience together. And now we're going to go home and have sex. Um, yeah. Amazing sex. Yeah. And I think it's only because it's, it's like you said, you're excited. And almost like when you feel like a kid again, you're, you're just those feelings of happiness. But I guess as an adult, because we've gone through puberty and we have the hormones, instead of that kind of excitement, it just feel a little differently. So I, I would imagine you get home, you're sitting there, you're talking about the experience, you give a kiss, the kiss turns into a little bit more. It doesn't happen all the time. Right. But I, I definitely agree that it adds so much to the intimacy. Right. And let's just throw this out there. Don't expect it to be more. I feel like we have to say that. Don't expect a shared experience to always turn into more intimacy. No. In the moment, for whatever reason or not, it may not turn into that. Yeah. But it doesn't mean it's a lost cause. It's yeah. not. I want you to understand, listeners, that it is worth it to build upon, to yes. keep building and building mm -hmm. and building. Even if your partner, he or she, doesn't want to have sex in that moment, there mm -hmm. might be other things at hand. So don't yeah. assume anything. Yeah. I don't care how long you've been together. Partners always assume shit about the other person. Mm -hmm. And I, I try to get men to understand when it comes to women, when it very specifically, when it comes to straight couples, women understand with other women and men, you guys have different 
uh, physiological needs anyways, but men 